In the first part, which you can find by clicking here above, we have seen in detail what happens to the body immediately after death. In this second part, we will continue to discover what are the changes that the body undergoes. The destructive transformative phenomena are autolysis, self-digestion, putrefaction. Autolysis. It is a self-digestive process due to cellular enzymatic activities alone. The speed and extent of the autolytic phenomenon in the various parts of the organism vary according to the type of tissue. Autolysis has a course slow and less intense in tissues with a high connective component rapid in the pancreas intestinal gastric mucosa and adrenal medulla intermediate in the liver and spleen in the kidneys in the muscles and in the brain self-digestion it is a phenomenon due to the enzymes contained in the gastric and pancreatic juices which continue to consume the walls of the gastrointestinal tract, and then, pass to the neighboring organs. Putrefaction Indicates the set of decomposition processes of human tissues, determined by the metabolic activity of anaerobic and aerobic microorganisms. The microorganisms belong to different species, many of which are part of the normal flora of the living organism, especially at the level of the upper respiratory and digestive tracts. Putrefaction is divided into several phases, which actually occur without a precise chronological succession, and tend to overlap one another. Colorative or chromatic phase. It can appear between the 12th and 72nd hours after death, as well as two or three hours after death, especially in hot climates. Green spots form on the skin, and generally, appear early in the area corresponding to the viscera, where putrefaction occurs with greater intensity, due to the considerable presence of microbiotic flora. Gas phase, or emphysematous, begins three or six days after death, in a warm environment, and later in a cold environment. Due to the high production of gas, by the anaerobic germs, the corpse swells up to take on a gigantic appearance. There is a noticeable swelling of the genital organs, as well as the protrusion of the eyeballs and of the tongue. The intense gaseous swelling of the intestine and stomach determines the upward thrust of the diaphragm, and therefore a possible leakage of food material, the so-called post-mortem regurgitation. In rare cases, posthumous birth or birth in the coffin has even been described due to the pressure exerted by putrefactive gases on the pregnant uterus. The corpse releases gas, which is the main cause of the characteristic odor of the dead. The gas can have a relevant composition of methane, magnesium, and potassium, a mixture that can trigger a flame in contact with the air in the well-known phenomenon of the will-o'-the-wisp. These are flames, produced by the gases emitted by organic materials, during their decomposition and occur at ground level, in particular places, such as cemeteries and swamps. In the past, the bodies were kept in coffins, which could not be sealed, and therefore methane leaked from the coffin, previously originated from the recomposition of the body. Colloquative phase. Gas production decreases, and the skin takes on a brown or blackish appearance. Adrenal glands, brain, pancreas and spleen, are the viscera that are most rapidly affected by this phenomenon. The remaining tissues, already softened by the previous stages of putrefaction, are transformed into putrid sewage. The various stages of decomposition are accelerated by the action of the cadaveric flora and fauna. The cadaveric flora is represented by some species of mushrooms, which can colonize the corpse, 
even if their destructive power on the cadaveric tissues is minimal. The cadaveric fauna, on the other hand, is made up of different teams of insects, made up of over 400 species. Those that play an active role in the decomposition process are dipterans and beetles, necrophagous insects, which therefore feed on decaying organic tissues. Among these we find the green fly, the blue fly, and the gray fly. Other categories of cadaveric fauna are necrophilic insects or parasites of necrophages, such as spiders, omnivorous, and opportunistic insects, such as wasps, hornets, and ants. Skeletonization It is the last stage of putrefaction, and is completed with the contribution of acids, which are found in the environment. Times are very variable, and depend on a number of factors. Usually, a buried corpse of an adult, decomposes into a skeleton, in about 10 years. This is why usually, after this time, the bodies are exhumed, and then the remains are placed in the ossuary. There are also special transformative phenomena, which occur only in the presence of particular physical chemical conditions of the environment. Among these we find Mummification In this phase, the corpse undergoes a rapid and intense loss of liquids, which prevents the development of the germs of putrefaction. The skin takes on a brownish color, and has the consistency of leather. It occurs in corpses found in hot, dry and ventilated environments, but also in closed environments such as caves, catacombs and basements. Maceration A process that occurs especially in drowned cadavers, or in the case of the fetus still dead in the uterus. The skin becomes white and wrinkled, until it flakes off. Saponification It is a transformative process, which occurs in corpses exposed to high humidity, for example submerged in water, or buried in very humid soil. It manifests itself with the formation of a whitish mass, with the typical smell of rancid cheese, called adipocera. Curification it occurs in corpses that are inside hermetically sealed zinc, or lead crates, where environmental conditions prevent rot. The skin takes on a yellowish color, and an appearance similar to freshly tanned leather. <laughs>